Okay, let's start uh, today. Let's see what happened in Coney. Let's take a look at... So we see that Coney closed at 28.10. So it was up 1.85%. Um, coin, the underlying asset, was up 1.99%. So we performed pretty well, probably 90 plus percent uh, mapped. Uh, we had some 250s and some 257.5 coin, both synthetics and um, some activity on the weeklies. So let's take a look at the synthetics so you can see before we go into the synthetic tab on the 250s, um, I didn't get the count, but I could tell by the holdings that we sold 545 of the 15,320 positions on the expiring 322, which is tomorrow, um, naked calls the long calls that we sold short. We had sold those at four and a half. And by the way, on Tuesday, when everything plummeted crypto-based and coin went way down, I really kind of put some comments about the fund managers because I thought they dropped the ball. We could have easily bought this naked call back for a dollar, maybe 105 on Tuesday. And we had gotten 4.5 for it. So that was close to 2.6 million, um, but they kept it thinking that, what? They were gonna get one more dollar in three more days? I mean, if you can get 75% of an investment, you can't get more than 100%, right? We could lose a lot. We could buy it back for 30, 40, 50 if it were to soar. We'd make that on the synthetic 250s, but we would lose it on the weekly. So anyway, it looks like today, the best I could tell for a buy price, they didn't post it like they normally do. I estimated that we bought it back on the 545 contracts out of the 15,320, that we bought it back for $7. So what did that look like? Going over here, we had a call credit when we sold all, you know, the portion of them at 4.5 and it cost us seven dollars to buy them back give or take a dime or something there in in the actual number uh, because they didn't post it so we lost roughly 136,000 by closing those out but if it takes off tomorrow again we, we you know we could lose a lot more so i think it's reasonable risk i may have even closed half of it if i was doing it but if it doesn't go up and it closes below 257.50, then we'll pick up the remaining 14,775, I think it's the number, if you subtract these two numbers, uh, and we'll pick up that 4.5, which is about two and a half million dollars. Okay, so let's take a look at what else they did. So, and I can tell this by the holdings. They also closed out, and I put it up here, 545. So that's the number they did both on the synthetic, which I'm showing you now, and on the naked calls. So the estimate was the closing price was 31.75 on the calls and 19.07 if you want to round it on the puts. So those are the 250. Now understand these go all the way out to 419. So there wasn't a lot of pressure that they had to do anything, right? So they were making some money. So they took a small percentage. Maybe they figured they would match to what they took on the naked calls. So as that stands, we made money on that. And we still have a position where we can profit $25 million if these things and 419, which gets us past the having 
and very likely coins going to be well above 250 so the puts are going to expire worthless and our calls are going to go up right we paid 37 so ideally we want to see 250 plus 37 we want to see 287 on the call price but we'll make all of the 32 if we're above 250. okay so pretty good day overall um Cash moved around. I kind of follow retire Rod, retire on dividends format. He's done a good job. Um, so our cash um, obviously changed substantially and went down about three and a half million because uh, we bought things back or sold positions. But we also otherwise stayed pretty much across the board in our treasuries and our. Um, first american government fund they call it which is a fancy name for a high yielding money market all right let's take a look at active so we are now for minus 545 here on this contract so we're no longer so we're down um, at 14700 and something so let's take and we're and so we're out of the money in those because we closed at 262 so these are just active contracts we actually and they expire tomorrow right so these are the ones that we really want them to be 257.50 or below. Remember, we got four and a half dollars. So at closing tomorrow at 261.50, they could buy it back at 450, and we don't make anything on those remaining 14,000. So as long as we get through the day in the 250s below 257, we can buy it back for a dollar or less. But like I had made comments earlier. I mean, I can't believe on Tuesday when it just crashed in coin and then a lot of the underlying crypto assets, they could have bought it back for a dollar and they chose not to do that, which to me is silly. You sold something for $4.50 and you got about 2.7 million worth of premium that you could capture. So a dollar from 450 left, you know, you're 75% in the money out of everything you can make. Uh, and that just goes to show that they had to buy some back today. Okay, enough on that. Um, what else do we have? Let's look at our holdings. We talked about that. Um, we're actually selling at a four cent discount. When you look at the weighted averages, all the market value. So again, our two treasuries, our first American government. We still have 14,775 contracts on the call that expires tomorrow. March 22nd um, and then these are our synthetics the call and put on the 250s so there's still substantial premium out there but again these are 419 right April 19th so there's not tremendous pressure on those uh, as far as payments went money didn't change I did notice that we went down 150,000 total shares so some people sold out of the fund. It's up near its high, you know, 30 something is the high. So maybe people are nervous and people that got in cheaper are just taking profits. There's still 13,000. So given the total income per share, they could easily pay a 250, 260, which is right up at our past premium, we could get a $3 payment. I know they like to leave money in NAV reserve, right? But just looking back over the last three months, I'm sure most of you know that have been in this fund. We were kind of disappointed last month thinking we were going to get $2. I thought we would get $2. We got $1.66. So I would say somewhere between $1.50 and $2.60 is where we'll be this time. Hopefully it's $2 plus. They certainly have the money to pay out two plus. Okay, the other one I'm gonna talk about today is um, 
Let's see what else I wanted to do in active. Here's a trending chart. I do it a little bit different than how Retire on Dividends does. It does kind of a star line chart. I just take a, a chart out on big charts and I do a comparative one. Uh, we know that Misty, or Misty, we know that Coney hasn't been around as long as Coin. And you're never going to get the same run. So we see, what, 250% for coin over this last 12 month period. But when we look at Coney, we're a little bit below 50%. So, but, but we've done pretty well. You gotta remember, you can see here, this was the last peak at $30, and we're right up in the 28s again, close to our previous peak. In coin, it's had substantial peaks. Um, so you're never going to get the same upside. You're protected a little bit on the downside. Um, but the main thing is we're getting distributions, dividends, whatever you want to call them. So you can have it both ways, although I kind of do call out the fund managers when I see them not buying back that dollar call. I mean, we owned it. They bought it on Friday when they rolled the last weekly calls. And on Tuesday, they could have taken it off the table and gotten 350 out of 450. So that's 75% of the of all the money that you could possibly get. And here they are today buying, you know, 10% of them back. Well, actually, it's probably more than 10%. Uh, you're buying that much back, and you're paying seven dollars instead of 450. So you're giving them 250. So, okay, you guys get the impression there. All right, let me get in to Misty and see what it did. Okay. So, today... Misty closed at $40.06, very close to its high. I know it hit something like $42 uh, in the trading session, and it wasn't just a few days ago it hit 41 and then it turned around and retraced back to 32 or 31 even. Scared a lot of people. And we may have another retracement th this month. Um, so we were up. 3.86% to 40.06, the underlying asset, um, MSTR, MicroStrategy, was up 3.41. You don't get that often. Yesterday we were up 8.65 and MSTR was up 9.1. So not bad. We actually beat it today. So people sometimes say, well, how is that possible? Well, it's possible when you have both synthetic positions and short or naked call positions. You just have, and the volatility is just right. Whereas if coin, or coin, in this case MSTR, if MSTR just takes off and goes up 15%, it's pretty hard when you're paying the dividend and you're collecting income and you have synthetics, you just can't match that performance. Some people say, own 50% of the underlying asset and own 50% of the dividend fund that tracks it singularly. Well, I guess what I would say is how many of you can go out and buy the amount of shares that you really want to buy in MSTR when it's a $1,700? Okay, it was only $1,599 today, right? But who can afford to buy that many shares? Now, I have on my own gone out and executed some of my own synthetics, but I'm talking about one or two contracts. But I kind of do it just to test it. That way, if I want to take something off the table early on a weekly, I can and not. I almost get the feeling that they're managing so many funds. It's Jay and his staff at what, Zaga Financial, I forget what they call themselves. They get hired by the funds themselves like EOMAX to actually do the options trading. And I think those guys are doing so many funds. My sense is 
they don't have time to pull everything back. Well, not having time to pull everything back to the tune of 2.6 million. So let me show you when we get to the holding. So let's take a look. So what do we have remaining out there? What activity took place? And again, Neomax didn't post the interday trades, but they post their holding so I can tell what they took off the table. So let's take a look at that. So on the holdings, they completely took the 950s, right? So I'm showing them here at the moment, but those all got closed out. Okay, so there are no more 950s. The good news on our 950s is I used an estimation, right? They closed at 650 on the calls because we're well into the money at 1600, the 950s, right? And the put with one week left, they expire on 328. So let's assume we bought them back pretty close to what the closing price was. We could have bought them anytime during the day, but the put wouldn't have varied radically. The call, if it's 1650, would have given us another 30 or 40 with a week left. So this is pretty close. So I had us at 4,279. So we just gained 14, you know, million on this kind of a trip. Well, actually, 10 million. Take 42, 4,279 to where we got to 14,455. So we got about 10.17 million, and we still have, um, well, actually, that's done. So we closed out the 950. Sorry for the confusion, guys, the way this thing gets done. We added 10.1 million. So our March profits, and truly their profits now, are locked in at 14,455. Well, let's take a look at, let's see what else is out there. So on our actives, I'll show you where these are. We took so many of these. Let me see how many were actually taken. So we rolled all the seven, we rolled all the 950s. Where did we go with that money? Well, what they did is they went out and they put on 17, or sorry, they put on 157, 1700 April 19th. So that big roll that we had been anticipating finally happened with six trading days to go. We really needed that in the fund to be able to pay out a large distribution, so I'll go over that. So I didn't fill in what they sold these for, but I'm sure they would have done them right at the same time. They would have rolled out of the 950s. But I did update the closing prices for the 1700s out on April 19th. So we stand if we, to profit if we close these out. But remember, we're below 1700 right now. We're actually trading at 15.99. I didn't update this one. I think it's 0.6. Um, so obviously we want um, MSTR to be over 1,700 with a halving com, and even if we sell off some more this month, you know we could be substantially over that and have a huge payout. But that's going to affect our May payment. Okay. So previously we had a loss okay on our uh, on our synthetics here um, and we still are in a losing position on our synthetics because we're not above the synthetic strike price of 1700 so let's go take a look at payments so i updated this and i added the 10 plus million okay we're still in short call income so look at this total income per share. The shares held the same today. So they were 775, no change there. So we've got $16 of income. Now, do I think they're gonna pay 10 or 12 or 14? No, no way. You know, number one, these, this was a new fund on February 21st. So there's usually an investor that puts up some capital 
so say I think there it was like 2.5 million in cash to start with before people started buying um, into the uh, fund so that money gets paid back remember this will be the first time so I'm guessing they keep the nav reserve at like eight bucks maybe we'll get an eight dollar payment remember we still got to get through um, what do we have left? They will buy the other short terms. Oh, we have to get through tomorrow, right? So let's say that MSTR surged to 1750. Well, that would hurt us. Um, in oh no, I take it back. Let me let me show you those. Sorry, guys, it's easy to get confused on these. Let's go to March Dab. These are the other ones in Misty we're still looking really good. So we close out the 950s, we went into 1700 synthetics. But here are weekly calls, okay? We're at 1600, give, give or take a dollar, right? So as long as we close below 1785, we should get all of 2100, right, shares or 21 contracts of 100, we sold them for 47. So as long as we stay under 1785, we we stand we tend we stand to pick up significant revenue. Okay, so we could make here another 2.3, 2. Point, so we've got another 2.5 that we could make in a single day. Otherwise, it's just book profit right now, right? We haven't closed out the position. So the only thing that would hurt us, and it wouldn't even hurt us that bad, if it ran to 1850, we still sold on average all of these uh, 1850, we sold 105 at $159, $147 for 50, and 157 for 12. So we're really looking good unless we get a massive update. The big massive update would kill these but they would would help the synthetics. We're gonna get the help in synthetics in time. So I'm hoping we close around 1750, 1775 tomorrow and we pick all of this income. So add that to the payment position and we could be up here with, you know, $19, $20 in the total income per share with really about another week plus, right? So. Remember, tomorrow, if they close those out, they're probably going to put on another weekly, right, out of the money. So depending on where we are, they're going to produce another 228, I'm sorry, 328 roll on the naked weekly shorts. They've already rolled the synthetics. Okay, guys, so great, great, great day on Misty. You can be assured you're going to get $3. I, I can see how they wouldn't pay three dollars on this scenario <clears throat> so I don't think there's anything else I show um, I played around with the net at asset values I made a note here to myself they roll 328 950s because they didn't put the price and they added 157 uh, which is how many of these they closed out at the 1700 uh, April 19th, putting calls or, an, or, or a way of saying long stock synthetic. Okay, guys, uh, positive day. Thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And again, uh, I'm not a professional money advisor. This isn't money advice. This is only for fun and education. See ya. Bye.